Here's the problem with the Philadelphia 76ers writ large. When your best offensive option in this day and age is a seven-footer who you need to beat someone off the dribble starting at the top of the key in order to score a basket in a game seven, and the guy isn't even fully 100%, And he's trying to beat someone off the dribble off the top of the key and someone like Danilo Gallinari can punch it free. That's a problem. Especially when that guy might be your best three-point shooter too. And the biggest problem is the guy that is his Robin to his Batman won't shoot the basketball. Because either A, he's afraid to because he might not make it or be in the case of passing up a clear dunk. He's afraid to go to the free throw line because he's about to get fouled. That is the ultimate indictment about what we saw from Ben Simmons yesterday. Passing up a dunk Because he's afraid to go to the free throw line. That happened in a game seven in front of God and country. We saw it. And I think, you know, our friend from Hollis, Queens, by way of Philadelphia, he summed it up best. I'm not going to sit here and say I didn't have a similar thought, but he crystallized it perfectly in Stephen A. Smith is that in Philadelphia, if you miss the shots consistently, it's a tough town. It's a tough town if you miss the shots consistently. But it's an unforgiving town if you even refuse to take the damn shot. And Ben Simmons, because of all that, is shot in Philadelphia. That's it. Problem for the Sixers is who the hell's going to take him? I'm boiling it all down, and I and I and I, I, I will say this: that the Hawks deserve all the kudos, and we're focused on Philadelphia. We'll turn the page. We've got a couple of days to turn the page. And the Hawks are deserving of our attention. And I will, at this moment, give pause and say that Trey Young has shown up on the NBA stage as a first grade, grade A NBA playoff game assassin. He is the guy who is fearless, who will take one from 29 feet and jar it and then drive the lane and make a tough shot, go into the basket, or slice up the double team off the dribble and create for a teammate or take it to the rim. He is phenomenal. And Atlanta can rest assured they have got themselves a generationally talented player. That aside, the Sixers process, which is why you started this way, T.J. Jefferson, being done, is because Simmons is done in Philadelphia. And the question is, is who's going to take him? Who will take a guy that is afraid to dunk a basketball because he doesn't want to be put at the line in the NBA in 2021 we saw that that's a broken player that's a broken player even the sunniest individual that I've met in my time here in Los Angeles Doc Rivers after the game yesterday was asked point blank is this a champion point guard that you have here in Ben Simmons Doc, do you think Ben Simmons can, can still be a point guard for, for a championship team like the one you guys want to become? Yeah, David, I don't know that question or the answer to that right now. You know, so I don't know the answer to that. What do you, uh, when you say get in the gym with him, what uh, what needs to be done? I mean, obviously, this is this is rushing. Yeah, I mean, I, I that's that's between Ben and I. He's got no answers. Literally, I don't have an answer for that. That's the quote. I don't have an answer. Who's going to take him? Who's going to take him? Whew. Made even worse by the fact that it appears, I don't know if it's true or not, that James Harden could have been acquired for him way back in the fall. That's the problem. 
You got a bunch of players around Joel Embiid who are talented. Are they next level? Who's the Chris Middleton here? Chris Middleton, who has built himself into a grade A NBA playoff assassin. What a game seven that was in Brooklyn. Where Giannis and Middleton making the plays necessary as everyone on that floor was out of gas. Giving it their all. Who's the Devin Booker? When Chris Paul goes down. Chris Paul, you could even say, is the Robin to Booker's Batman. You could say that. You could make that case, even though Chris Paul, when healthy and not in COVID protocol, is viewed as the straw that stirs the sun's drink, but we saw in game one against the Clippers. Who's the Paul George? Who's even that? On the Sixers. Who's the Paul Who's the Paul George? Because Paul George? Exactly. Paul George? <laughs> who's the Terrence Mann? Who's the Reggie Jackson? On the Sixers. Because those guys, who's the Marcus Morris who showed up as the Clippers remarkably win the final four games against the Jazz to earn the Western Conference Finals appearance that the Clippers fans have been waiting for. They won the last four of that series. They fall down 0-2. They win the last four, last two without Kawhi. Who's the, who are those people on the Sixers? I don't think they exist because Ben Simmons is broken. Now, I don't even want to hear, like, these were his problems in college. The problem is, is that when players come in with problems in college, in any sport, any sport, name the sport, when they get into the pros, they work on that and actually make those Achilles heels a strength. We've seen it. We've seen all-time great players have an Achilles heel despite still being an all-time great player in the NBA, and by the end of their careers, it's gone. And in so doing, even Kobe lost his Achilles heel. The literal one. Remember Jordan didn't have an outside outside jumper? Remember that? Remember that story? <laughs> yep. Okay. Yes, All right. Yep. Then he finished his career shrug, shrug emoji. Yeah. Whatever Kobe's weaknesses were, gone. Ben Simmons doesn't appear that he works on a damn thing. I don't know the guy. I shouldn't sit here and kill him in terms of his want to. The problem is, is he can't do. In every game in the playoffs, regardless of the sport, the playoffs will find the weakness. If it's a right fielder with a pop gun arm, if it's a bullpen that has a problem with the left-handers, if it's the shortstop who has a problem if it's the wide out who can't create space, if it's the linebacker who has problems filling a gap, if it's a Las Vegas night goalie who can't move laterally, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's seriously, you see it every year and year right. out. And the problem with the Sixers is that their main offensive weapon, who's terrific, who was an MVP candidate this year, is a seven-footer who has to create off the dribble. And when it all comes down to it, if the two-man game comes down to Joel Embiid and Seth Curry, and you've got a bunch of other players on the other team, like Trey Young and Gallinari and Kevin Herter. Who's the Sixers? Kevin Herter. Sorry, TJ. That's the Sixers' problem. You were nicer about it than I would have been. This is Daryl Morey's problem. This is Doc Rivers' problem. This is Philadelphia's problem. Who's going to take Ben Simmons? And I don't don't tell me Portland. <laughs> I'm going to tell you that, Rich. Uh, you could tell me all you want. If you've got a hope chest at home. Str a stranger things Whatever that is. Whatever that is. You might have to throw the Liberty Bell in. I don't know. It's cracked. Who needs it? Offshore it's, gaming sites, guys, in case you're into that type of thing, Ben crypt. Simmons' next team, if traded, Blazers, 2-1, to one, wi Wizards, 3-1, to one, Spurs, 4-1, to one, Jazz, and Thunder, 5-1. to one. Get out of here. Yes, Rich, it's a possibility. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.